What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and we're gonna talk about a topic I haven't touched in quite a few years, actually. The last time I did anything similar to this video was back when I had my 3770K system, and I was trying to see where bottlenecking started to intrude in Battlefield 3. But we're doing a little bit more broad testing today, and we're gonna see what happens when we take our 8700K and we do a full gamut of testing at six cores, 12 threads, no overclocking or anything, just out of the box settings. We're gonna cut it down to a four core and then a two core, and we're gonna see if we get any sort of fall off, telling us whether or not the CPU race we've seen over the last couple of years has actually benefited to a better gaming experience for gamers across the board. With its adjustable PMW 3367 16,000 DPI optical sensor, four RGB zones, nine customizable buttons, and offering both wired and wireless operation are only a few reasons why the Corsair Dark Core RGB should be on your shortlist for your next mouse purchase. Check out its full list of features by clicking the link in the description below. So like I mentioned in the intro, I haven't done this in a while. Last time was a 3770K with Battlefield 3, and that was just one title that painted one picture and didn't give really any sort of substance because it was, it should have been this Battlefield 3 bottleneck with a low end CPU. We're not actually gonna be checking for bottlenecks today. Reason for that is we're, I've only got one CPU that I'm testing with, an 8700K that I'm going into the BIOS on ASUS and changing the configuration of how many cores are active. I don't know if you guys knew you could do that. Most motherboards that are overclocking friendly can also allow you to go in there and start turning off cores. So you can do this testing yourself at home if you wanna see if your CPU will start to bottleneck your GPU as you disable cores. So we did this uh, three different ways. We did 1080p testing and 4K testing in nine different titles. Heaven, Benchmark, Metro Last Light, Dirt Rally, Far Cry 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of Mordor, Hitman, Time Spy, and Fire Strike. The reason why I chose those titles, it's a good mix of new and old, demanding titles. Uh, Shadow of Mordor also had the HD, HD texture pack, which, um, or the HD pack, whatever they called it, which bumped up some demand a little bit, but not too much. That was a very demanding title back in its day. Far Cry 5 being the newest title on this list, which is known to be fairly CPU and GPU intensive. But it's also important to know I'm using the built-in benchmarks on these tests because having something on a rail is the only way to get consistent results to actually measure any sort of difference. But the actual gameplay experience could definitely differ from the actual benchmark. Also too, all of these titles, I have pretty much everything maxed out. So what we're looking for here is how the game performance and FPS, average FPS scales as we start to either add or remove cores. Now hyperthreading is on in all of these tests. So essentially what I've got right here is an 8700K, fully unlocked, not overclocked, but all cores are synced. So technically it's an overclock because all cores will go up to the turbo clock rather, rather than just one or two cores. And the DDR4 is running at its native 2133 megahertz, not a higher like 3200 or anything like that. And the Titan XP in here, which is also not overclocked, but does have the fan curve cranked to make sure that thermal throttling does not become a factor. We want to keep things as consistent as possible. So with that said, Let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks. You guys will see the slides and then we'll do some live gameplay because the slides only tell part of the story.
So the results actually surprised me enough to where I had only done two core and six core testing. I had decided to go ahead and do all the tests again with four core and of course 4K and 1080p in all of these titles because the results were a little bit surprising. Where I think we're gaining, obviously in those slides you could see things were very, very close. Within margin of error and at a point which the user would probably never notice there was a difference had I done a blind taste test between a two core four thread and a six core 12 thread in any one of these titles. Well, with the exception of Metro last slide, I mean, I think we saw whether well, it was a huge FPS difference, 142.95 with two core and 1080p versus 211.89. That was obviously our biggest uh, reduction. And then we had in Hitman, 137.32 with a six core versus 87.22 with a two core. So that was a 50 FPS hit in 1080p. But in 4K, once we do high resolution, high settings, and we're ask asking the GPU to do so much, the GPU slows down to a point to where even a slower CPU like a two core four thread is not being the limiting factor in the amount of FPS that we're getting. Now also too, it's important to note, this is a 60 Hertz panel and pretty much every single one of our results here was above 60, which means we would have probably never noticed it had we had V-Sync or G-Sync. This is a G-Sync panel. If we had those features turned on, then we would have just seen a lock 60 FPS in every single one of our tests and it wouldn't have mattered. But if you're running a super high refresh rate panel like 144, 200, or even a 240 like the Seasonic panels, then you would have probably started to notice a little bit of difference there in terms of these 50 FPS variants. Two core and six core uh, were not as far apart as I was expecting them to be. 4K, I expected them to be very, very similar. The four core and the six core obviously very, very close. Very hard to distinguish a difference between them. I'm sure the the chart, the charts, the chart, the charts showed that. So yeah, but there's another thing we have to test here. We need to test for things like dips and stutters because what this these charts don't show you is in a perfect scenario, yes, the FPS is very similar. But what happens if you start running a background task? What if there's a background update taking place? What if Steam is upload, updating or installing something in the background if you have that enabled? What if you have Google tabs open? You know, Google uses GPU as well. And Google can actually, if you have a lot of tab open, tabs open, Chrome can actually be quite intensive on your CPU. So there's a lot of different things here that this test doesn't actually show you because they were perfect examples. So let's go ahead and turn around. Let's get into a game or two here in real time to look for things like dips and stutters because that's gonna affect your overall gameplay more so than any average FPS. So here's our FPS counter right here. Here's a graph for you guys to see any sort of crazy dips and stuff. We are actually rendering the game now. Um, see, I'm looking around here. And this is our GPU utilization. Now you'll notice this number doesn't peg at 99 like it typically does in games, because as this number goes up, which is the CPU usage, the GPU usage is gonna go down. That will also be reminiscent here of the temperature. The higher this number gets, the higher that number gets. The higher these get, the lower these get. So that is effectively what I hate to even call a bottleneck, but it kind of sort of is. But you can see we're still getting an awful lot of FPS right here, even when our GPU usage is not completely pegged. So the helicopter view just turned to point at the ground and look at that, look how far FPS came down into the 60s, right? So this is definitely going to be an interesting experience here, I think. All right, so now I'm actually able to free look. Obviously we look down, our FPS goes up. Look at the sky, our FPS goes up. Look straight ahead so it starts doing things. Yeah, so as I look down, look at that. Our FPS is still really high. It's not really redrawing any images, but look at our CPU just sitting in the game here. I'd always heard that this guy chops down trees for a living, I'm pretty sure. But look at this right here. I mean, depending on where we're looking, I'm wondering though, how much of that will change if we do like, you know, obviously four core or six core. All right, so we're back in the same airplane or helicopter scenes we were before, but notice this now, our GPU usage is much higher because our CPU is definitely playing hot potato with the cores, but look at how divided up that workload is amongst the CPU. So Far Cry 5, and a lot more FPS here than we had before, a lot more consistent too. Far Cry 5 definitely appears to be one of those titles that is taking advantage of the multi-threaded workload. What we're gonna wait for right now is the part where it turns and looks down because that was where it dipped into like the 60 FPS, 50 FPS. Okay, here we go. Oh, so look at that. We looked down and we still dipped for sure, but nowhere near as low as we did before. Last time it was well into the 50s. CPU is still handling that workload and passing it around as multi-threaded workloads are supposed to do, but it's pretty obvious now that 
Far Cry 5 is an example of one of those titles that will definitely give you a better experience with multi-cores. But we're not see seeing nearly as many low dips, though. On the four-core, or the two-core four-thread, we were seeing a lot more of these low dips. So what you can take away from today's video is the fact that CPUs are definitely improving, and that's because of the competition finally taking place in the PC space. I would love, or the CPU space, rather. I would love to see this level of competition taking place in the GPU space. So obviously we're still waiting to see what's coming on the horizon for both NVIDIA and AMD. Maybe we'll learn some stuff at Computex on what's coming, I have no idea. If you feel I should do this video with an AMD processor, let me know which one you think I should use. We're, we're in an interesting place with AMD because we just had new hardware launch for the Ryzen second gen, I guess they're kind of calling it. It's more like a 1.5 gen, but I'll do it again. Maybe I'll take something like a 2700 uh, and then, or 2700X and shave it down to a, like an eight, a six and a four. I don't know, we'll see. You guys let me know what you think I should do. My prediction on that, it would be very, very similar to what you saw today. Just different max FPS or average FPS numbers, but the same type of scaling between resolutions. Because as we've seen, games are definitely taking advantage of multi-core more than they were say five or six years ago. Meaning that you no longer have to worry about what CPU you get for your gaming experience just make sure that you pair your GPU and your panel. I think pairing the panel and the GPU is more important than pairing the GPU and the CPU because this setup makes no sense with a 60 hertz panel if we're playing it in 1080p, but it makes perfect sense if we're playing in 4K. And even the two core four thread variant of what we just did right here with a Titan XP and a 4K panel would have made perfect sense, but not in 1080p. Anyway, guys, if you think I should have done this test differently or you think we should revisit something here that we may have missed, let me know in the comments below. I like to kind of tweak our test to try and hit the center mass of the audience on, on trying to get videos that are relevant on these testing topics. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. We'll hope to see you guys at Computex. We'll be uploading a, quite a bit of content, giving you a very unique, hopefully a unique first person type of perspective of what it's like to attend the world's largest PC expo. But with that said, guys, it's time to go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.